Hi guys, Richard from Sharpshooting UK here. I'm delighted to say that spring is on the way here at Sharpshooting UK. There are rabbits everywhere. Always amazes me how they uh, suddenly, miraculously appear in great numbers as soon as the very first sign of spring emerges, or even as soon as the slightest bit of sun shows in the late winter, early spring. Incredible. No wonder they're so prolific. They uh, survive the bitter, bitter moor. And you think, there's no life up here. And then, boom, a million rabbits. Anyway, here I am, and I'm doing a uh, scope roundup for you. But a little bit different uh, this time. What I'm doing is I'm looking at cheaper scopes. People don't always have money for your recons although it's a bargain, and uh, here's another bargain, the uh, the Delta, but I mean, that, that this Delta Striker, it's a, it's a killer bargain, but it's still £1,400. Um, so, you know, there are people who want to spend under £400 and have a scope these days that will dial um, repeatedly, re you know, reliably, with a reasonable adjustment range, um, proper turrets that you can uh, have what I call good legibility, so you can see what's What's going on? Um, illumination, um, you know, a clever ret. You know, uh, this is something that I don't know. A few years ago, it, it couldn't really be done, and you had to spend more money. So, I've assessed with Optics Warehouse. Oh man, probably thirty sub four hundred pound scopes, and essentially, we've been mulling this over for more than a year, and. There are some overperformers in what is frankly a class full of gimmicks. Seriously, there's some horrendous gimmicks, some um, mag ranges that are laughable, and there are not a lot of scopes that can walk the walk. So I'm going to show you the bottom line here as I see it, and hopefully that'll help you get a good dialer under £400 in, uh, in UK money. Right, let's cut to the chase. Okay, to give you an idea of gimmicks when the money should have been spent on the glass, this is the MTC Viper Pro, and it's got a very peculiar turret system where you can have it click, you can have it move freely, and you can have it lock. And then it's got this magnifying glass thing on it that you can line up and it will save you putting your glasses on. Uh, that's all very noble. But how about we get the glass sorted first? Um, another situation here with this. You see this window that the mag is in? Okay. Looks kind of cool because it's all, you know, in a little sleeve and all this. That just makes it harder to see. So you're shooting like this. And to look at the mag, a lot of scopes got it on the side now, which is really cool. And sometimes it's raised even. But in most other scopes, you reach up and you can see your number. But with this one, because it's in this funny little sleeve, you've actually got to reach right over, really high, and there you can see what mag you're on. It is a gimmick that moves the performance backwards, and that does not thrill me. Now, this is a 5 to 30. There's no way on God's earth it can get anywhere near that type of mag range. If it were a 5 to 15, 5 to 18, 5 to 20, it might not be terrible, but 5 to 30 out of the question. So what we've got here is a scope with lots of bells and whistles that is milky, fussy eye box, um, unable to hold itself together as you zoom in and fails muster completely. Now I'm not singling this out for um, you know having a, a strip torn off it, I'm just showing you that I'm not easily impressed. If it is milky and I define milky as there is no way to find an eye box however much you struggle. And the image is unacceptable because it's white and shadowy and ghosty and milky. That for me is a dead fail at any money. I don't care if the scope's 100 quid. If it's milky, it's in the bin. So there are a lot of scopes we looked at sub 400 pounds that were milky and went in the failure pile straight away. Unfortunately, this Nikko is one of them. This is a very bright 
scope. I was, I had high hopes, but it's so misaligned that you can't get it working. And the fact that I think underneath the glass is probably quite decent with regard to resolution and transmission and brightness. The uh, misalignment of it that creates this milkiness, this ghosting inside, uh, this un discomfort as you're trying to uh, get your eye lined up means it's um, a complete fail. There are things I like about it, but if the glass isn't clear top to bottom, no good with me. And that brings me to our two effortless leaders here. The Hawk 6-24 and the Optizan 6-24, both of which have thoroughly impressed me for their money. The Optizan is superior in a couple of areas, which we'll get to, but generally, optically, it's just behind, just a little bit behind, but it is a chunk cheaper. So it's excellent because every penny counts in, in this category. What these do, both of these do, is they are crystal top to bottom. They have quite acceptable field of view, resolution, sharpness, colour. Um, you know, all the optical attributes are much better than I had got used to looking at the other things in the class and also for, for this money. But I'm not sure some of the mid-range scopes at five and six hundred pounds are a very great deal better. So these are real overperformers. Now, as I say, the class generally is full of tat, but these two have impressed me. Okay, so in a bit more detail, let's see what we've got. With the Hawk, we've got six to 24. We've got minutes on the rack. Clicks aren't bad. Turret legibility is not bad. We've got on the windage. We've got the windage marked both ways. Okay, so one left, one right. Now you don't get that on some much more expensive scopes. So kudos there. Fifteen minutes per turn. Okay, we've got no turn indicator, but uh, most people with this scope won't be dialing more than 15 minutes. Not too bad. We've got our parallax here. The fit and finish of the Hawk and the whole Hawk range really is outstanding. You get good caps, you get a good box, you get a sunshade, you know, the, the support with the reticles online is great. They're a really solid establishment. Um, this one, the IR markings look like the finish is, is terrible. It looks like it's been drawn on by a child. But you can forgive it that because it is a class package. From my point of view, I would like to see the RET markings matching the turrets. When you get into dialing properly, that becomes pretty fundamental and it's fairly old fashioned to have a mil ret or a half mil ret or whatever with minute markings on the on the turret. That's a bit behind the curve. I know it's still very popular in the air rifle world, but it's better, guys, when they match. So that brings me to the Optizan. The Optizan is even better finished. This is a tenth of a mil scope, but there's a um, minute one coming. Fast focus diopter, metal uh, covers, good legible turrets. The IR is great, really nice. It really walks the walk. Let's have a look at these turrets. Lift to turn. Clicks are nice and legible. Proper markings. One left. Excuse me. One right. Now I can name some 800 pound scopes that don't have the markings each way properly like that. We've got good legibility here. So it's looking good. Now, let's talk about how these will perform optically. So what we're talking about with the Optizan and the Hawk here, 
which are very similar optically. It's just that the Hawk is ever so slightly more punchy and colorful, uh, maybe a tiny bit more resolution, but they're quite similar, the Hawk being just, just a few percent better, but then it is a little bit more money. What we're talking about here is the bottom of the Mag Range 6 being crystal clear, nice easy eye box, no problems, no tunneling, no softness, you know, spot on. Then as we zoom up all the way to 24, we have no silliness with um, the eye box becoming fussy, uh, milkiness, you know, you know, that rolling ball effect. None of that is a problem. We've got solid 6 to 24. And the whole time we've got quite surprisingly good levels of resolution, sharpness, colour, contrast. The field of view is not dismal. It is not worse than, say, the Cytron S3. So there we have it. I'm going to look at my tracking notes now and I'll show you what I found on my tracking board. Now, I don't just dial it five minutes and come back to zero. A lot of scopes almost always come back to zero. What separates the men from the boys is two things. One, when you dial 30 minutes, do they dial 30 minutes or do they dial 29 or, you know, 31? What is a problem is when you get to the extremes of windage and the scope carries on clicking and you think, oh, you know, I'm still going left, I'm still going right, and you're not. These are called dead clicks. Then, when you are up against the edge of wind, you dial up and the scope doesn't go up. It goes either nowhere or it goes diagonally. And then suddenly it will start going vertically up. So you get these troubles in the corners. Now I've put scopes through from, you know, 150 pounds to 4,000 pounds. And you would be surprised what I found. Um, all I can say really to be fair is that I've been impressed by the Hawk and the Optizan, both of which you can trust for the type of dialing that they're going to be used for. And that includes some reasonable and significant centerfire dialing. Um, you know, if you put 20 minutes on these things at 25, 30 minutes, they are going to be okay. I'll get my notes and I'll show you the details. So tracking wise, we've got a small amount of error here um, as I say, this is not atypical of some much more expensive scopes. 40 minutes of dialing moved 39. Return to zero, perfect, even when uh, windage and elevation moved to the extremes. Uh, 43 minutes total adjustment range. That is something that uh, you do do a bit better when you spend a bit more money. 43 is okay, but you know, 75, 80, 100 really helps. A lot of people are forced to move these scopes on when they realize they can't get out to a thousand yards and they need something with, uh, you know, twice the adjustment range in. But with regards to um, accuracy, not a disgrace. As I say, there are plenty that I measured that were, but the Hawk and the Optizan do well. Optizan was excellent. Here's the notes for the Optizan. Okay, rain's coming down now. Right, started raining, and I'm going to carry on uh, summarizing vlogging style. Let's get this thing lined up. Look at that, fantastic. Yeah, so essentially, these cheap scopes are generally awful. Um, when it comes to doing the more advanced duties of high mag and dialing. But the Hawk and uh, I mean the Optisan's barely 300 pounds so I'm thoroughly thoroughly impressed. The turrets count both ways. Yeah they've only got 45 minutes of adjustment range but you know that adjustment is not shabby. The return to zero is, is solid with the Optizan, you can even go to the ed edges of windage and um, 
stirring your coffee with a with a survival knife. That's pretty tough, isn't it? Um, going to the edges of uh, windage and not having uh, loads of dead clicks and diagonal adjustment. That's uh, that's impressive. That that really is. Um, so yeah, um, they will go on your rifle. Uh, they will allow you to zoom in, see clearly. They're not terrible at dusk at all. They'll enable you to not have to worry all the time about your eye box and I can't get lined up on this thing. Um, they've they've really impressed me. The field of view is similar to um, something much more expensive like a PST or, or an S3. Um, yeah, the, the Optizan and the Hawk I recommend. Can't recommend much else in the category that I've seen. Um, you know, and I didn't expect to be able to recommend anything at this budget, but. I, I can say if you've only got 300 quid, the Optizan is safe. If you've got 400 quid, the Hawk is a uh, shade um, brighter and sharper, tiny bit less chromatic aberration. And um, that you then have to go um, to the Cytron to get more resolution and um, the, the PST, and they are a chunk more money. So these are, uh, these are overperformers. Um, don't buy for gimmicks think carefully about what it is that you actually need and if a scope says it can do five to fifty for 400 quid it can't don't buy that scope keep it simple um and uh, from from a huge brand like hawk or a huge brand like optizan you know uh you, you you you've got the best chance and um and there we go i hope uh, i hope this helps it's been painful <laughs> there's been some awful scopes and there's been some scopes we expected to be good that weren't and um the frankly the old classic of the hawk i, I can see why it's quite popular in, in in your gun clubs around the land um and the optizan is uh, is a real bargain and the matching ret to turrets impresses me. Uh, they both, the, the Hawk and the Optizan, count both ways on the windage, which is, you know, really, um, uh, it's essential. But a lot of scopes don't do it uh, for more money. Uh, illumination's good. The rets are, uh, you know, in the ballpark. So, yeah, good work, those, those two guys. And uh, as I say, stick clear of the gimmicks and uh, buy one of those two and, and, and then get saving for you know, your, your thousand pound scope where you will get more, you'll get more resolution, you'll get more field of view and you'll get a lot more adjustment range. So if you want to get um, one of these scopes, say the Hawk's got 45 minutes. Now imagine that you, I've done another video about this, that you are in the middle of that when you zero your rifle. You're not really going to be able to get out to a thousand with an R308. Um, you might be able to get out to a thousand with something very slippery, but remember the rule about the edges. You don't want to be bang up against the edges on any scope, but particularly a budget scope. So that's where you start to need adjustment rails and you start to run out of potential in the scope and need to spend a lot more money. But for normal duties, these, these two will do the job. So uh, yeah, well done. Interesting stuff that. Okay, I hope this helps guys. I'm gonna have my coffee. This is a matter of interest, is a very rare 1022 clone. It was made in the States in um, full stainless steel um, in limited numbers and was imported into the UK by Theoban, who called it the um, Theoban Lightning. And it had um, the gunsmiths at Theoban really breathe on it. Um, everything is shimmed internally. This is in the mid 90s when you know, there weren't really many of these custom 1022s that, that, that there are now, improving on the design of the 1022 and, and improving the tolerances. So this was full stainless, full shimmed trigger group, everything honed, match barrel, um, really, really top quality stuff, you know, a proper recall buffer, all those little differences. And uh, they're very rare now, very rare, and this is a, a real gem in my... Uh, collection of uh, of 22 so um yeah amt theoban lightning target so i've been playing on that with these various 6 to 24 dialers they're not all 6 to 24 but uh 
that neck of the woods. That's often a, a popular mag range on um, rim fire and, and air rifles and such like. Now, don't get me wrong, these scopes are capable of going on centre fires, but a great deal of the people who will only spend £400 on a scope are in that rim fire air rifle um, you know, usage set. So uh, I thought I'd put it on a, on a Remy and, 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 and do that. I've also done extensive tracking testing, so I can report to you whether these scopes are trustworthy, which is a big deal, and there's a lot of hype about this. And I have also done exclude, um, and I have also done extensive dusk testing, flare control, um, you know, different types of lights, and always side by side. You cannot trust your memory to. Um, give you information that's that's sufficiently accurate for testing scopes you have to you can remember your impressions and that gives you an overall global kind of knowledge but to see one scope versus another you need to do it immediately right then and there so what I do is I have a big old row of 25 scopes and a voice recorder and I go from something premium like the recon to give me some perspective then I'll go to something cheap really cheap to give me perspective at the other end go through all the mid-range price wise so that I can say for your money this is what you're getting this is how much better you know ten times as much money gets you etc etc as a matter of interest I'm testing the Swaro X5 3 to 18 the um, V6 3 to 18 Zeiss this magnificent find the German Precision Optics new brand GPO uh, two and a half to fifteen this is one of the best uh, stalking scopes I've ever come across and it's about 1300 euros so that's uh, a real real bargain so there's an exciting premium and yet always with an eye to value roundup of um, sort of uh, hunting three to eighteens coming up there we go I hope that uh, this test has been informative for you.